Hey guys, we're here at Fort Hood, Texas, and we're covering the 2020 Lightning Challenge. The US Air Force puts this on for some of their best TACP teams. TACP stands for Tactical Air Control Party. These are the guys that embed with units across the military service to do everything from calling in close air support to coordinating air traffic. They are probably one of the most lethal elements per capita in the entire United States military. We're with 14 teams of the U.S. Air Force's best tactics this week. They're gonna be run through a gamut of obstacle courses, fitness tests, tests that challenge their tactical and technical expertise, as well as their physical endurance. If you saw our coverage last year at Best Ranger Competition, this is kind of a similar deal, but it's about two days longer and we're covering multiple locations across Texas. Really excited to see what these guys are uh, gonna be up to. I know today, on day one, they're, they're running through the obstacle course, they're taking a marine combat fitness test. They're gonna be doing all of this out in this really what is just pretty shitty weather, right? The wind's blowing, the, the rain is coming in, in in droves, and the temperature is dropping as the day moves on. So we're gonna be following a couple of the teams as they move through the day and then throughout the week, watching what these guys are able to bring to the table. Excited to take you guys through the 2020 US Air Force Lightning Challenge, and let's go see what these guys can do. That's probably a little easier to replace than these Gore-Tex. Um, yeah. Not only that, it's it's you're gonna get hot. Your carabiner might actually be a little painful. To bit, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll wait right after that. <laughs> First. Sergeant Shot. Right. Yeah. I'm with the RS Fort Worth, which is the recruiting station headquarters. We're actually out here today running a combat fitness test with the JTACs, TPACs out here and getting them ready for their competition because they do this every year, I guess. Um, it's new to us, but not new to them. So it kind of gives them uh, a way to challenge themselves physically and, and push through a mental adversity as well. So it's pretty cool to have them out here. Is it fun to uh, get to smoke some airmen a little bit? Oh yeah, we always enjoy smoking uh, other branches out here. You know how competitive we are in the military in general. So it's always great to do some cross training with the other guys. See uh, Mason Egan, that was the Marine CFT. Uh, it's a pretty solid test, good event for the Lightning Challenge. Definitely a good testament to our Marines here. Yeah, I mean, it was great. Definitely a smoker. Um, nothing we can't handle, right? What was the most challenging part? Definitely carrying my partner's heavy self. Um, he's small, but he's dense, and uh, definitely showed that during that little farmer's carry. Good 
You get injured. There's a hard ball road right here. The teammate goes out, signals one of the vehicles roaming the whole time, and there's medics at the halfway point with water. Any questions? What if you quit? I'll be in my car. All right, so you have till 9 o'clock. It's 5.40 water right now. And then we got like late start. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's go. We have till what, 9 o'clock? Yeah. 9 o'clock. Hey guys, it's day two. We're out here early at Fort Hood. This morning at 05, the 14 two-man TAC P teams took off with 70-pound rucks on a 12-mile ruck march down the tank trails of Fort Hood. And it's 37 degrees out right now, and it's, it's warmed up since they started. The wind is blowing, the rain is coming down every five, 10 minutes or so. The conditions are just absolutely brutal. But these guys, with 70-pound rucks, uh, were just absolutely inspirational. Some of them kind of limped in, but many of them come in just a touch over two hours, and that's a pretty fast time for even a 35 or 40-pound ruck. Uh, these guys are doing it with 70. So it's kind of a great example of, you know, these tactics, they have to be able to embed themselves in Army combat units, Marine combat units, special operations units across the, the DOD, and they have to be ready for anything. And I don't think that there's any doubt that any of these teams out here couldn't go anywhere, do anything under in any situation. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. What you're looking at right now is at the halfway point for the ruck competition, the ruck at 12 miles. Uh, first couple teams already passed. You have about five competitors, six competitors just passed. They're at the halfway point. They're right about an hour and 20 minute pace at six miles. We have one injury right now. Guys having a little bit of injury with his knee, so he's still pushing through it. He refuses to give up, but we'll see how that ends up affairs in the end. Right now, uh, Ruck favorite Aaron Conway is definitely in the lead. He's got a pretty good gap, at least a half mile, and he's didn't even really look like he was breathing hard, but Aaron Conway's definitely run a lot of ruck competition. If you don't know, he had definitely placed his team in first at the Battalion Death March a couple years ago, and he's definitely a heavy favorite for the ruck. Conway! Give me that smile. Good job, Good job, Conway. Good job, bud. What'd you do this morning? This morning, zero three, wake up, then uh, grabbed our rifles, grabbed our rucks, 60 pounds, plus our water. Um, then we, uh, it was cold, wasn't it? It was cold. It was cold. Yeah, everything on me hurts right now except for my hands and my face. And that's just because I can't feel anything in my hands or my face. But uh, yeah, we just started this 12 mile ruck. Uh, it's a little heavier than I think most of us are used to. So it was a tough one. Awesome. And do you know like uh, where you guys stand, where your team stands right now in the competition? I have no clue. They they won't tell us any of that. They won't even tell us what, what we're doing next. So keeping us on, on our toes. <sighs> drop ruck. Woo! Well, that sucked. Where do we drop this bad? I cut, dude, I caught a bad trip. I got one of those hills. Oh, did you? Yeah, I went like seven. Oh, These tack bees had already done more in a single morning than most would do in an entire week, but the day wasn't over for them. They moved on to the next stage of the competition where they had to show proficiency with the Paladin 155 millimeter artillery system. This weapon system can fire GPS guided projectiles over 40 kilometers away within 10 meters of its intended target. I broke off from the main competition to catch up with Colonel Danielle Willis. She's an experienced Air Force officer who's seen and done quite a bit. With all the lessons learned that have gone mm -hmm. into the employment of air power uh, in support of ground troops, what are the big changes that you've seen as far as the, the evolution of TACPs in the Air Force and uh, and particularly the more recent changes of their inclusion into the Air Force Special Warfare community. So I think the first big thing that was a major step for our TACP was we were declared a weapon system by the Air Force about two years ago. The Vice Chief of Staff of the Air Force signed a program action directive. So really 
to recognize the contribution that the TACP brings to the force by calling them a human weapon system has not only given us the prestige that we deserve, but it really shows the rest of the Air Force how we, important we are to the joint fight. We're more and more looking at our near-peer threats and preparing for future battles. How does the TACP play into that next fight? So when we listen to our service chiefs, the general officers, and we look at the strategy that we're putting out, we're talking about more joint operations. You'll hear joint all-domain operations, joint all-domain command and control. We're really talking about whatever effect that you can get on the battlefield that's going to stop the enemy, whether it's iron or whether it's some type of space or cyber effect. And when we describe how we think this is going to work, um, you know, the future vision is that we have some type of mesh-like network with embedded forces that can work at both high end and um, if we're in a contested environment and we don't have access to all our computer systems. When you look at that, that capability already exists and it's the TACP weapon system. They're already embedded with the joint forces and they have the trust and confidence of those that they're working with. We're absolutely crucial to the future of how we're going to fight. For day three, they started off moving to Reveille Ranch, just west of Fort Hood by a couple hours. Beautiful hill country out here, but it's not easy to move through. This morning, they picked up and went through a wide range of shooting tests. They had multiple different range complexes set up. They had a dynamic range, they had a precision range. On the precision range, we watched them a little bit and they were engaging targets from both the prone and from behind cover. All right, so it's two shots per target, five targets. 10 rounds prone, same thing from the barricade. Hit. 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 It was uh, definitely not an easy course. And then over at the dynamic range, they had used both their rifle and their sidearm skills to move through a shooting course that featured a vehicle that they were assaulting. Really interesting stuff and really shows that these guys are more capable than just, you know, uh, sitting on a radio and calling for fire, right? And, and coordinating fires. These guys are a tactically proficient asset to any team that they embed with, whether that's an infantry platoon or a special operations team. Uh, these guys are able to, to plug in and, and be an asset in a fight if and when it comes down to, hey, not only did we just call for fire, did we drop bombs, did we call in close air support? but we're also getting into the gunfight. So these guys are really showing their skills out here. It's pretty impressive. And uh, I'm just excited to see these guys going through and get some great training out at, uh, at a great ranch here. And it, it's just a completely different environment. So we just watched the TACP teams take off into the woods. We're out here in Texas Hill Country. This is their second night now of doing land navigation. So what you're saying is we're doing the same thing as last night. Yeah. We'll see you out there. <laughs> You'll probably see us on point two. Like, what the fuck? Fortunately for these guys, the, the weather cleared up a little bit today. It's been cold and rainy and miserable uh, the whole week so far. Um, even for us covering the event, it was like, man, I'm ready for some sunshine, right? And man, the sunset was just absolutely beautiful. Seeing these guys step off on the land nav, even though it was gonna be tough for them, it was just awesome to watch them walk off into the sunset, into the Texas bush and, and uh, go get after it. Hey, look at this peak right here. Very nice. That's like straight in line with our point one. This course is a little different. It's shorter, but uh, if you notice on the map, the contour lines are really tight. Um, it's really easy to walk up onto to something that, uh, that that drops off really quickly. Uh, quite unforgiving in the dark. Plenty of spills and thrills, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, last night I fell down a cliff, landed in a uh, patch of cactus. Uh, some of it broke off of my leg and the uh, medics weren't able to remove it, so 
Uh, got some good sensations going on. Hopefully we don't have uh, a repeat of that tonight, but uh, we will find all the points again tonight. So. All right, so this event simulates a competitor going black on ammo while trying to retreat to a superior position, requiring a transition to a sidearm. This is a shooting and physical event. This event is designated to simulate running out of ammo while engaged in a firefight, requiring transition to a pistol to shoot from a position of superiority. Competitors will neutralize the targets as prescribed by the cadre. Competitors will receive 10 rounds of 5.56 and 30 rounds of 9 mil against five rifle targets, six pistol targets, and a Texas Star. There's such a tendency in this community because guys get to a location and you'll stay there for a few years. The group thing happens. Mm -hmm. if, if you and I spend a lot of time together, you'll find that we will we'll train the same way and we'll do things the same way. But if you bring guys from all over the place, put them in one place and everybody looks and says, oh man, this ASOS is really good at physical things, but they're terrible shots. Mm -hmm. Or this ASOS is really good at calls for fire, but they're horrible physically. You can identify and learn from each other by seeing, hey, these guys do it well. Hey, what do you guys do to prep for this? And it can drive your training going forward in the future. Yeah. Oh, hello guys. We are at station 12 right now on the lightning challenge, which is the have quick station. Have quick is a piece of software inside our radios. That is a frequency hopping software for anti jamming. This is an old skill. It's kind of an old technology that has been around since the eighties, but we still use it because there still is possibly a threat out there, especially with the things that we face nowadays in what could be our next big battle. Uh, team four. Right. Hey, go ahead and ground all your honest, stuff. Get yourselves get, comfortable. Uh, you will have 20 minutes to complete all of this. Okay. The tiebreaker, if you get both things correct, would be who did it in the fastest time. So what unit are these guys from? This is the team that I am rooting for. Team four, the one four ASOS out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. These are the guys I know in my heart are going to win. Uh, so I have a lot of confidence in them. I mean, obviously they walked up here. They look like they're they're here to, to do some business. And as they're getting the instructions, they don't even need all of the instructions. They were like, oh, what's the task? We got it. We're going to do it faster than anybody else, which is generally the type of person that comes out of the 14th ASOS. No, I know. Yeah. We got beef strips in tomato sauce, beef stew, vegetable, get out of here. Check this is team four. I have you loud and clear. Help me. Hey, he's got me. Then. Right, yeah. Six. Hey, I think you're right. Actually, you start with the first one in the sequence, and you move yeah, over right. every time. All right, Quebec, Lima, Delta, November, Victor was. Mike, Sierra, Kilo. How coffee salt? How coffee salt? Huh? How'd they do? Fantastic, as a matter of fact. They got uh, full points. Awesome. I'd like to go ahead and go on record to say, I told you so. Well, my boys have made me proud. They came in here, slayed this fastest time out of any other team. They got comms faster than anybody. They just did all around better, which is, makes sense. They're from the 14. As we start to wrap down the week, it just becomes so obvious why tac -Ps are some of the most lethal people on the battlefield. You know, whether they're embedded with the Army or the Marines or a Special Operations Unit, 
They're the guys that are able to bring the most heat to a battle. Their whole reason for existing is to put warheads on warheads, and, and they're so good at it. We've got the award ceremony tomorrow. They've got a few more events to knock out in the evening, and then they'll go in and we'll find out who the winner is. They've, they've kept it pretty close to the chest as far as who's in the lead, but we've got some ideas on who might be out there. just wrapped up the the fifth and final day of, of the 2020 lightning challenge they crowned the best tap p in the service the winners of this year's lightning challenge 2020 representing the 14th day outside of fort bragg north carolina the best tap p in the united states air force staff sergeants cook and conway <laughs> What a unique team, uh, and certainly the uh, the 14th ASOS had a lot of support coming into this. You guys had a lot of veterans of the 14th ASOS rooting for you. Uh, I know one of them. Yeah. Uh, what's that mean to you know bring this home to the unit and, and represent the unit in that way? Oh man, it is just uh, I don't even words can't describe it. And uh, I think uh, JT was down there. Uh, we were doing the um, establishing HF comms. I don't think we did that well at every station as we did there, but that was a good moment, a good uh, uplift for us to have him there talking us up. And this is such a rewarding and such an impactful career. Uh, every exercise I've been on with the Army or whoever it may be, they've, uh, there's been multiple instances where they rely on the JTAC, and it's, it's a very rewarding experience to to be relied on and uh, to have that big impact on the mission success. You know, we talked to the competitors and they were careful to note that it's not just one event. Any event that they did this week on its own would be a difficult thing to overcome. But when you stack event after event after event, day after day after day, it's a cumulative effect that is just really difficult to describe to anybody who hasn't done something like that. It's an incredible thing that all of these guys accomplished, not just the winners, not just the second and third place, but you know everybody that came out here and gave it their all. You know, These are folks that now have to go back to their unit, continue training, continue deploying. I have no doubt that some of them are gonna be heading directly over uh, and into combat zones. You know, it's a low density career field and their services are sorely needed on the battlefield. They are the, the ground forces connection to air power and uh, what they bring to the fight cannot be understated. Uh, overall, we're heading out of here with a great appreciation for what the Air Force TACP community brings to the fight and can't wait to see these guys again. <laughs>